So I got the, um, the 12 months of stamps and stencils and that was so much fun and it's kind of like a little advent calendar and all of the little stamps and, sten and stencils come in these cute little packages. And so I thought I would show you the one for February if I haven't already done that. You may have seen, I've seen some really cute card samples of this that people have made on the um, Brutus Monroe fan page. And if you are not a member of that, you, uh, go to the Brutus Monroe fan page on Facebook. It's a lot of fun. And you can see how a lot of the fun products are made. And then I just opened March, which I have a sneaking suspicion, yes, would be our cute little leprechaun. And he also comes with this cute little stencil. So you've got your little shamrocks. So I may have heard something somewhere about... So I, I'm keeping the stencil, but I do have a couple of extra stamp sets. So these are these are the samples that I was given before it was available, and I thought maybe I'd pass these along. So um, if you want to share this video, we will do a drawing before the end of this video, and we'll do uh, one for each. So somebody will get the little leprechaun, and somebody will get the little flamingos. All right, I think it's time to jump in and get busy. So I am not really one who ventures out as much as I should on cards. I, use, I do the standard A2 card often. I do a lot of the slim lines. I do a lot of, I like square cards and I'll do some round cards, but a lot of times the ones that are kind of the fun folds, that's one of my things I've noticed is that I need to work on uh, broadening my horizons and doing more of those cards more frequently. So I decided I wanted to pick a different fold today and do something a little a little more interesting as far as folding goes. And so we are going to make a corner flip card. And it's really, as far as folding goes, this is a really simple one to go with. Um, it's nothing too crazy. Maybe we'll work our way up into more complicated ones, but for me, I kept it pretty, pretty tame. First thing we're going to do is we're gonna go back to the roots of what I said and start with our standard A2 card. So I'm just taking a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper and I'm going to cut it in half, which is five and a half. All right. And now, I have to tell you, I really struggle. Tell me if anybody else has this problem. I get the whole concept of a scoreboard. I get that you run your little tool down the down the grooves, but I am so, I, I don't know, I have some sort of coordination issue where I just cannot seem to keep the little tip in the right groove. It like will skip over or I'll somehow kind of merge into another one. So I struggle with that. Maybe I'm just extra special. I don't know. So I also like to keep a score blade on one of my cutters and I don't use this cutter as much as my other one. So I always keep the score blade on it. So we're going to go ahead and go to four and a quarter, our halfway mark on our card stock. And I'm just going to score that. Okay, so you may wonder why I have my scoreboard out. We are going to use it. We just are going to use both because of my, my struggles. All right, I'm talking a lot. If I'm missing co comments, feel free to jump in, Darren. For some reason, I started kind of in a flurry. I was kind of nervous. All right, so we've got it folded. It's just your standard A2 um, half fold card. And now I'm going to take it with the folded side up against this. So my scoreboard has this nice little tool. I have had this thing for over a decade easily. I think it's the Martha Stewart. Yeah, it's a Martha Stewart one. And I'm and it has the little has the little compartment that holds on to your little triangle thing. So that you can make angles. 
And seriously, if you would have seen me last night trying to figure out angles, it would have been, it would have been pretty comical for you. It was not very comical for me. <laughs> Poor Darren. He's like, come on, you're going to be all right. It's not that serious. So this is me again, having to just kind of go with a very elementary way to do it. Because I was having a hard time just visualizing whether I was in the right place here and at the right place down at the bottom because the bottom is not marked. So I went ahead and I just counted my grooves and I counted 16, which makes it two inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a, a groove right here. Jen says you can't use the angle thing. She can? She can't. She, oh. Jen, thank you. I feel so much better. I'm not the only one. Okay, so see, I, I was having a hard time kind of making sure I was in the right spot. I didn't trust myself. So I'm going to do this, but I'm going to just see if I was right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So yes, I was right. So if you have a little more confidence than I did, you probably can just do it, and you can probably go all the way down, and do a great job but like I said I struggle with this so I I made a little notch here and a little notch here Christopher says they carry lots of scoreboards including that one yes oh I, I forgot that and then Robin says she has the same problem you do I'm so glad I'm not alone I, I was feeling very inept <laughs> thank you Robin okay so now you can see I've got my notches and this is just my really simplified way of this so we are going to, let me just show you, that is our folded side, right? We made our notches that way. So I am just going to line that up on the little groove for my cutting, my cutter, <coughs> my trimmer. I want to make sure that you guys can see it. I kind of had it down low. So yep, yeah, it looks like they're both, both ends are in the little groove. And now I am just going to go back and forth a little bit. You don't want to push so hard that it goes through your cardstock, but this is this is Brutus Monroe uh, cardstock. This is Lagoon, so I know it's nice and sturdy and it's going to be able to withstand that. So I wanted a nice score line, and look, it was it made it just so simple for me. So once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and kind of bend the whole card, not just one side, you're bending it all the way this way. I put a link up to the scoreboard. Don't force it all. Thank you. There's a link up for the scoreboard. Don't fold this piece in all the way. Just kind of wiggle it enough that you've got your score line. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to open it up. Seal says hi. Hi, Seal. Mind about sharing. Seal, we have a thing going on right now. Uh, there's a couple of stamp sets up for grabs if you want to share this video. I just thought I would make sure you got to know about that. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and burnish this side as well. Michelle says that's her issue. She scores right through your paper. Yes, if your paper isn't super, uh, super thick like lovely Brutus Monroe cardstock is, that can be an issue. Yeah, just it doesn't take a really heavy hand. Um, but just knowing, I guess, is the trick, is just kind of playing. Okay, so we have got the base now for our card. Jen said she was already screwed up inside, not the body. <laughs> oh, Jen, we must craft together sometime. It would be so much fun. Oh, oh, I, I love that. Okay, so now we've got our base set. I Look, I even have a spare. I, I think I have two more on the table somewhere because I was terrified I was going to mess this part up. And I don't even know yet if I have it completely right. So bear with me. I think it is. I think it's okay. So then I'm going to cut three panels of pattern paper. Just coordinate it how you want. I actually have one of them already cut. This is from, uh, this is photo play paper. It has this really cute, I cannot remember the name of this. Keep an eye on the, the screen. Oh, Okay. I think I'm right under the camera. Yeah, just a little crooked. That's okay. Um, so this one has a super cute plaid, and then it's got this cute little floral on this side. And honestly, I'm not sure which. There are so many beautiful 
photo play papers on the site that you might just have to look around because I I'm not completely sure what's still available. I should have done my homework, but I had my hands full with just learning how to score. <laughs> okay, so we had this cut down. Sorry, let me put that aside because that's going to confuse you. So this is also photo play paper. This one came from my stash and I can't remember where it came from, so I don't know. It could be, but I'm not sure. I forgot to take a note of that. I apologize for that. It's called picnic table, Shannon. Picnic table. And then this one, is, I think this is called confetti or streamers or something like that. I don't know what it's called, but, and this one, I'm not sure if it is photo play paper or not. So I just is, thought it was cute. Called celebrate what, I think. This, this one is? Not the other one. This. It may or may not be. I anyway. Okay. So I cut this down. These are like what you would cut your card panels. It's just your, your four by five and a quarter. So you're going to cut three pieces of paper this size. And once you do that. Then this is how I figured this part out. And again, bear with me. This is this is me dumbing things down for myself. So then I kind of put it on the um, the card base about where I would have it centered loosely, as you know. I told you that's how I measure. And then I just kind of folded it over the edge. So now we're just we've got it. So we can just kind of use that to cut our triangle. And if I remember right, I trimmed it again. Let me look for sure. Hi, Tina. No, I, okay, yeah, that one is, oh, I'm not sure that's right on this one. Let's look. Let's see how that works on our, oh yeah, that'll work might not be exactly straight but it will will embellish if we need to this one I did better this one's a lot straighter so yeah that's what happens when you're kind of loose about it but I think it'll be okay I'm usually the one that's hardest on me you guys are always sweet to me okay let's see so we're gonna cut this down by one Oh, you were pushing hard. Oh dear, yeah. Yeah, that that takes some strength. <laughs> you are strong. Okay, let me move this over so you can see kind of what we're going to be doing. Because we're going to kind of center this in that little panel. And then I've got I already got the other one somewhere on this table of stuff. Okay, so, so far you're kind of seeing where I'm going with that. We can set those aside for a minute. And then we need one for the front. And that's what we're going to do with this one. So, we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to kind of line it up. You have to hold it pretty uh, tight where you want it. I've heard it might be easier if you're not in the middle of a live, but I could be wrong. Okay, so we're getting the basic, basic score there. I feel like that one's a little off, let's see. And if you are a measure, a measuring type, you probably can do it a lot easier. But we're just going to go with this method for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this down our score line. Whoops. And hey, if nothing else, it's entertaining probably to. Uh, see see the struggle of 
Oh, I sure hope I cut that right. Hang on. <laughs> Jen says, OMG, that's exactly how I would have done it. And I did it wrong. Because I need it to be this one. See? I tell you. So then you just go to your stash and pray that you have another piece of paper. Which thankfully I do. So we'll just cut that down. Let's see if I can do that better. I guess I need to go with this side is what we need to do on that. So four inches by five and a quarter. Michelle giving you a whole bunch of laughing. Oh my goodness, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you for your kindness. Okay, so we gotta figure this out. It has to be the one that goes this way. So if we're going that way, we'll just do it right on the front. Jen I just made it harder than it had wrong. to be. Yep, that's exactly how I would have it. <laughs> oh, you guys are too good to me. I appreciate your kindness. Thank you for not being too hard on me. Okay, so yep, we're just going to fold that down. Now we can know that we have it on the right side. Okay. And it would probably help if I put my glasses back on. I think I'll do that right now. That could make a world of difference. Okay. Vanity is not worth it, right? Okay. We've got, we've got things rolling now. So now we've got our cute little panel, which I can't promise is perfectly <coughs> perfectly right, but it's going to be okay. That'll work. So let's start there. Let's, um, I might trim that down just a little bit. We'll trim just a tiny bit of that off. Hopefully the angle is pretty close. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. So let's go ahead and start packing some stuff down. Thanks for sticking with me this far. <laughs> And now you see why I love A2 cards and slimline cards and why I need to challenge myself to do more folding so that maybe it'll come easier. And you know what? You also saw how, okay, I messed up. It was a piece of paper. That's not the end of the world. I'll throw it in my stash of pieces that I can use for something later and all will be right with the world again. It's just not the, it's not that serious. It's all okay. So step out of your comfort zone and just try something new. And I am just going to challenge all of you to do that this weekend. If you have some crafty time, try a fold you haven't ever done before or try, try a technique or something that you have not tried that you've been intimidated by. I know I saw a few people who were saying that they were, I think it was Gina, in fact. Gina, wasn't it you that was saying you were a little afraid of foiling? This is your opportunity. Okay. So that, I think, is good everywhere except maybe... There we go. We're going to go with the... Close enough here. Well, I really struggle with the close enough. I really want it in the right spot. Eek, that didn't sound good. Okay, let's take that off. Okay. Do 
Shima said it was me, LOL. Been staring at my laminator since November. Yep, time to pull that thing out. Worst case scenario, just use just for your first try, just cut off a tiny little piece. Just try to foil something really small so that you don't feel like you've wasted anything. Okay, we've got the base. Now you might wonder what we're gonna do with all this. I might wonder too. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I actually do have a plan. So we are going to use this adorable die. This is the circle rainbow or rainbow circle, one of the two. Oh, circle rainbow. Circle rainbow. Love this die. And I've already cut it out. I also, in addition to that, cut out, excuse me, a Actually, circle. Sorry, it's round rainbow. Round rainbow? Let me get it right too. All right. I knew it had something to do with that shape. We've got the round part down. Okay, one thing that was kind of fun, I, I kept this little piece. You can see it where it fits. Because we're going to use this for our sun to go behind it. But I thought it was easier if I kind of have something to use to build it onto. So this particular circle was just the right size. This is from the foundation dies set and you can kind of see I think it's the third largest circle I'm gonna put that right back in my package of dies so I don't lose it and I tried and it was probably user error I have to tell you but I tried using this with um, an adhesive sheet but it was a little too delicate and would not cooperate with me. So because I knew how really graceful I am during these lives, as I'm sure you're all aware, I decided to avoid that. But I think if you had determination, you might be able to make it work. So we're just oh, going to, cool isn't this a fun one? I love this die. This one came out, oh, I think at the beginning of the summer, in um, one of my favorite boxes that Brutus Monroe has done so far, it was the rainbow box, and that box is so much fun. I think they do one, I think there's one every year, I'm not, I, if I remember right. And let me just tell you, the special boxes that you can get through Brutus Monroe, um, in addition to your, your inspiration boxes, a few times a year there's these special boxes and they are chock full. I love them. And I said that was my favorite, but I also loved the Christmas one and I also love all of them. <laughs> I have honest to goodness yet to be disappointed with a box. Okay. So, we are going to try to just kind of delicately slide this on. So I'm just, I've just been gluing these little strips into the grooves. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Almost have that done. And also, uh, if you ever want to see, if you've missed a broadcast or something, I do post these on both my, uh, both my YouTube channel. Was, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, I kind of went ahead because I didn't know I was I was missing. Um, so yeah, if you ever miss a video or anything, I do post it on the Crafty Shenanigans YouTube channel, and I also have been putting them on the Brutus Monroe channel. So you should be able to still catch them if you want. Okay, so let's see. Let's see how this works exactly. So we're going to put this little guy on the outside of our card and we're going to leave it so that this part just folds in. Okay? So just bear with me for a minute. Let's let's put the other paper on first. So we'll just put our design paper, our pattern paper, whatever on. Michelle says that looks great. 
Isn't that a fun one? I just love that. Michelle, you are awesome. Thank you for, for coming back. I'm not sure why it's never done that to me before. I don't know why it kicked me. I don't know if our internet had an issue or what. It wasn't us? No. But I just want to keep broadcasting it, but she shut you down the way Facebook did. Oh, Facebook shut me down. Why would Facebook do that? I don't know. Okay. Weird. Okay. All right. So now we're going to put this guy. And you know how, how well I do this. Let's see. We're just going to go for it. We're not going to measure every single corner because we don't want to drive ourselves crazy, right? And then we'll put our little corner on there. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we will add our little corner piece. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. You can imagine how much fun this is if you just, if you take a, a collection and just play with it. I love buying paper in packs so that you can get all of the different patterns that coordinate. These ones I just happen to kind of pull together, but um, a much easier job when you have them already kind of selected into what is coordinating, but great way to use your stash up when you don't and to be honest with you the rest of this card is kind of just imp improvising because I haven't made a sample card we're just kind of we're just discovering together how to do this okay so now we've got all of the card base is ready to go Okay, so now that's going to go on the inside. I forgot that I wanted so to do this. Paper uh, this pattern paper and this pattern paper are photo play. And I'm, Picnic to be honest, I'm not sure about this one. And confetti. Picnic table and confetti. Yeah. I'll put the clip. Okay. okay, so what we want to do is we want something that's going to pop up when we open our card. So I have all of these other pieces ready to go so that I could spend just a little bit of time. I didn't want to spend a whole video coloring, but I want, I figured I would show you um, a, real quick how I like to color. I love colored pencils. I think they are the easiest medium to work with, at least for me. That doesn't mean they're everybody's favorite, but I really like them. And I love my Prisma colors. I mean, there's a million different kinds of colored pencils out there but these ones I think are really user friendly they blend really nicely if you're using the alcohol ink blend paper then it's a dream I actually right this minute I'm not I'm using um this is not your mama's what staff said is from what oh let me show you what these boots are from this is from the inspiration box set you can see where I cut it out all of these cute little guys came in that set. So if you have not received uh, or have not subscribed to the inspiration kit, you're not going to want to miss out on it. Tons of fun. Okay, but these boots, seriously, look how cute all of these stamps are. But these boots, they just call to me. In fact, um, I made this from, from that set because I just love those boots so much. So we are just going to create a cute pair of little gal galoshes, rain boots, whatever you like to call them. They are so nice. I, I've colored with lots of other ones and enjoyed them, but until I had these, I just didn't know what I was missing. Gina said she just got a box today and didn't notice the boots. Oh, the boots are so cute. I think it'd be cute to do a whole card 
with boots as a pattern for a panel. I have some sort of thing about um, umbrellas and and rain boots and I don't know. I just, I love, I always am drawn to those kinds of stamps. I knew when this stamp set came out, speaking of which, this is the little stamp set we're going to be using. It is called, I Choose You, I think. Is that what it's called, hun? Yes, Choose You. Choose You. And it's got th this, well, here's the stamp set. I'll put it over this so you can see it. I always choose you is what the sentiment says. And I fell in love. The second I saw that, I was like, mm, yep, got to get it. So I don't have a coloring cam. So hopefully you can see me. I can move the camera a little bit closer. I don't know if that helped at all. Some tips for uh, coloring with coloring pencils. Uh, I've heard a few different opinions. My personal opinion is I really like to have the ed the ends of my pencil really sharp. Some people like that when they color with it a little more dull like this one is, that it's, um, it's easier to get softer lines. But I also like to color in kind of circular. I, do I don't push real hard for the first couple of layers. And for me, the key to making a really nice uh, project with, with colored pencils is layering. It's just kind of a patience thing. I always think it's fun to see who who enjoys coloring, what kinds of coloring they like to do. Same kind of with uh, fussy cutting. I'm somewhere in the middle with that one, I think. Depends on just how fussy is the fussy cutting. Know what I mean? So we're just going to layer that on a little bit more. And I used two different shades of orange because I wanted it. That's the thing I like about Prismas is you can kind of do more color mixing with it. I didn't want it quite as bold as just plain straight orange. And I didn't want it quite... Uh, so I just used the muted orange on the bottom verse. So now that I've got most of the color down, I'm going to actually sharpen my pencil. And now this is when I start to color a little bit um, with a little bit more pressure. So now my tip uh, is sharp. It makes it a little easier to do that. I just kind of blend it and as you're blending into the you don't want the whole thing to be the same right so like on this umbrella you can see I've got it darker there and darker around the edges you kind of want to um, get some definition in there some shadows some highlights so I kind of figure we're going from the inside of the boot so this is where it's gonna be the darkest is right in here Tina says agree about fussy cutting. yes it has to really it can't be fussy cutting forever for me, but I don't mind a little bit. If I'm just sitting down watching TV or something and I have that to do while I'm sitting there, that doesn't bother me so much. And having good fussy cutting scissors is a good, a good thing too. So I'm going to get just along here a little darker. And definitely darker, closer to that place where there would be a shadow. And then just kind of ease up your tension, or, or your pressure, I should say, as you color up, because you're blending into your other color. Robin asked, do you ever use gamma salt? You know, I have used baby oil, but I haven't used, I, I think I may have used gamma salt a couple of times, but I didn't see a huge difference between the two. Um... I don't typically pull out the baby oil or the gamsol, whatever, unless I have really definite harsh lines, which sometimes I don't even care if they're a little bit, um, if there's a lot of contrast, because I kind of like how, I, I don't know, maybe I'm weird, but I sometimes kind of like the uh, definition that it gives. But um, as far as coloring experts go, that would probably make some of them shudder. Michelle. I am no expert. 
Michelle says, I just colored and plus it got 13 bunnies for last month. Stamp of the month. Oh, wow. That is a labor of love. Christina says, I used a Prismacolor blender marker to blend my pencils. Oh, I didn't even know that they had a blender marker. That sounds like something to put on the old wish list. Okay, so you can kind of see it's taken shape. And I'm going to kind of go a little faster for the rest of it. This is the bulk of the boots anyway. That's the part that's going to take the most, right? So let's just go ahead and quickly... Might not get quite as much definition, but this is just... Um, Quick little tutorial, right? I just kind of wanted him to go along with the umbrella. That would be kind of fun. And I'm not even sure that looks... I'm not sure it's the same orange, but I haven't done one of the things that I did on that yet. So this might make the difference. So I wanted to bring out all of the colors. I was kind of trying to make them all work together. And so I used a little bit of this this red or a red I'm not even sure if it or not red this is kind of a pink um and I can't even be sure it was exactly this one because this was an afterthought and I didn't have my pencils all sorted because I didn't know I was going to need them again so I just kind of had to guess so we're just going to use this to get a little bit more shadow and a little bit more contrast And it makes it a little faster too. I mean, you could layer and layer and layer, but you need to get a little more depth in there sometimes. One thing I do use, I may not always use the um, the baby oil, but I do like using like little blending stumps. The one thing you want to know is you want to be pretty well sure you're done with the color pretty close. You don't want to push so hard. If you push really, really hard, it breaks down the fibers of your paper, right? So if you're kind of just not, do it in a kind of non-committal way. Just kind of blend it out, but don't push super, super hard to where your paper's shiny because then you know that you're kind of breaking down the fibers of your paper. And once you do that, it's hard to get any other color blending done on there. Okay, I think that's, that's pretty close. All right, I'm spilling all my stuff around. So we're just going to color our little circles. It's kind of being sort of random. And I may need to do some more coloring on these boots later, but in the interest of time, I think we'll just keep going. Especially with that weird thing that happened, getting booted. I think it was a different pink. I'm not loving this pink, I gotta be honest. Um, let me see if I can grab the other one really quick. I would love to have everything right on my desk, but my desk would be forever long. It would be like a mile long desk. You have too much stuff. Nah, there's no such thing. There's no crafter ever. Yeah, this one's more vibrant, see? I like this one better. Hard to tell when you're just looking at the pencil lead, you know, but I obviously guessed wrong the first time. Uh, we'll put a couple more of these on there. That kind of made them pop. That's, that's what I was going for. Okay, so then let's just do... Let's just kind of blend this out. So I colored a little bit more, um, with a little bit more pressure on the heel. Because we'll just give it a little more added interest and we'll just make our little soles of our boots this color. And I don't try to do a lot of blending on the sole of this of the shoe. Partly because I just don't have the patience to do it <laughs> when it's that small of an area. And because there's still some things I want to do with this card, and we're running out of time in a hurry here. 
Okay, so we're just going to, that's got it. Now I, I know that this stamp set has a die set that just became available on the website. Darren, surprise, surprise, there's a product I didn't tell you about. Figures. Yeah. I always surprise them. We, usually I get, I get them to get all the links ahead of time, but every now and then I throw something in there. Pretty much every time I throw something in there, don't I? All right, who is still here with us that shared? Because if you shared... You should probably share again. Just, to, uh, just say shared again so that we can... Put you on the redo that since we lost everybody all right our boots are officially that's just gonna have to be they just have to be done i could color forever and i could mess with it forever but we don't have forever right now so we are just going to take our cute little boots i want a pair of those boots and we are just going to do a quick fussy cut so we've got, this is the base of our card that we made earlier. We'll put the two videos together and put them on uh, the Brutus Monroe YouTube channel so you'll be able to watch it in one video if you missed any of it. And your YouTube. And it'll also be on, on my YouTube. I was going to put this in between those and forgot, so I don't know that we're going to use this one, though I do think it's really cute. Let's look and see what we think. The thing is, is you don't want it to show. So yeah, if I'm going to do it, I want it to look like that. I don't want that little jet to come out. We could put it over here. Let's, let's play with it a little bit. So we're going to put a little piece of non-committal tape on there. <laughs> I don't want it to be so taped down that I can't get it off if I don't want it on there. And we, we will put it right like this. Let's see how that works. And then we're going to get our rainbow. Yep, that'll work. Because I want my rainbow to go about right there. So let's use some of this amazing, I love these foam dots. These are the greatest thing. So you want to make sure when you're putting your adhesive on that it's not going to be up here where you're going to see it, right? You can go up a little higher than I did, but don't go too high. So these are the best. They have these pull tabs that make it so easy to get the little backers off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this guy, whoops, we gotta make sure we're covering up the little, the little cutout on our, whoops, on our sun. Okay, so now, a little crooked but that's okay because it's not going to show in a minute we're going to use some more of those on our little umbrella kids I think we need to maybe double dot this one let's look and see it's really bugging me that this is crooked I'm going to see if I can get it off still if you catch the foam when it's still kind of fresh, you can get it off. Once it's been a little while, it's a little harder to reposition. But if you're quick, it's not too not too bad. Okay, so we've got to move this over a little. Yeah, the longer it sits there, the more it's going to stick. So we'll put... Maybe one little piece here. And then we've got the two pieces there. We may actually need three on this one. Just so that it kind of sits on the card evenly. We'll see if I'm overdoing that. I think that'll work. Okay, so we're going to pull off our little tabs and stick those. I tell you, you guys are witnessing me make this card for the first time. The, the whole thing, the whole enchilada. I've never made this kind of a, 
a card before. So, hi, Jackie. Thanks for being so kind to me as I've made my little mistakes. Okay, so when you're doing when you're doing this piece, we just want our little. You don't want it to jut out any further than. I think we're okay. Let's just try it. I'm gonna just be brave and try it. So here's a trick. If you want to try something and you don't want it to stick down too much, you just want to check it where it's at. Put your tab back on so that you only have a little bit of it showing. Does that make sense? So that you can test it out. So yay, there it is. I don't know that that's really sticking out as much as I want it to though. Let's try it a little higher. Yeah, I think that's cuter. So we're just going to peel those off now. Now that I don't remember where I had it. I think we'll just do it like that. Okay. And then we're going to take these cute little hearts and make kind of a shower of rain and hearts little shower of love. I think this one should go down lower and this one should go up higher. Make sure your raindrops are going the right way. I think we'll put this little guy down here. Yep, I think that will all work. Let's see, I think for this I'm just going to use some glue dots. Usually I just kind of grab what's handy. I think we had that about right there. And this little guy is so small, I think we're just going to glue him. Ooh, too much glue. We're just going to use that glue for probably all of them. Diane says it looks perfect to me. Oh, Diane, you're so sweet. Thank you. We'll put that guy there. Can't promise that's where it was the first time I put it down, but hey. It works. And we'll move this guy. Do I want him? I think he looks better on this side. I'm kind of glad that I didn't glue it down the way I had it. I think we need them on this side. And then all we need is a sentiment. And I'm not sure if I want this one. Um, I think it's adorable. I just don't know if that's the one I want for there. Um, let's look at, okay, have you guys been using these? These came in, this was in last month's inspiration box. I haven't gotten this month's yet, so I don't know. I, I believe there's some in there, but I don't know for sure. Um, who, uh, who was it that said they just got theirs? Maybe they can tell us if there's any in there. Yeah. Gina, do they have, are there sentiments in there? So let's see. Let's do, um, there's You Make Me Smile. There's thanks for being so sweet. I would use thank you for your friendship, but I got a little close. How about it's your day or hello, sweet thing? Anybody have a preference? I like enjoy the little things. That's kind of cute. That kind of works for this. Let's do that one. excited to see it. Okay, so we can either put it here, which is kind of cute. We should probably put something up here, but you need somewhere to write your message. I don't know if this is the best way. If you want to write a lengthy note to the person that you are sending to, you could actually just put another piece in and put a little piece of white 
Um, like I said, this was my first time making this card, so I might tweak it a little bit. I don't mind it over there, but let's see. Gina says, sometimes I link the sentiment strip in, in with the light ink color. It looks awesome. Oh, that's a cute idea. Yeah, I like that idea, Gina. I'm kind of liking it on the front. Usually I put the sentiment on the inside, but I'm kind of liking it in the front. What do you guys think? Could also just kind of put it at the end. Let's see. We'll put it on the inside on the end. I haven't heard any responses. Did anybody say? Not yet. No. All right, you guys. I, I didn't get a quick enough response. Sorry. Michelle says front. Front. Okay. Michelle wins. She's got the fastest fingers. All right, Darren. We are probably about ready to do the drawing. Drawing. We need two people. Anybody that hasn't said anything, share it. Do it quickly. Yeah, you, last chance to share the video. Okay. Yeah, if you share the video, then you'll be entered to draw uh, to the drawing to win either these flamingos or um, the. Leprechaun. I keep wanting to call him a gnome because he looks like our gnomes. So I have to stop myself each time. So what do you guys think? I don't think, oh, I don't have to turn it, but I'll turn it this time in the video that we record it. You won't have to do that. So you could still tweak it some more. You could use some little sparkle pens. You could put some glitter on there. But it was fun to build this with you guys because I, like I said, I've never made this card before. Um, tried a new fold. You saw it had its ups and downs, but I think all in all, it's kind of fun. I think I might find some new things to do on the inside um, now that I've kind of got the basics. Gina says, super adorable. Sammy says, super cute. Aw, thanks. That was a fun one to make. And you guys saw it. It wasn't really that hard. It was, <laughs> there were user errors from me, but just go for it. If you haven't made one of these and you decide you want to make this particular style or even you know honestly i would love it no matter what you're making if you try something new this week uh that you haven't tried before whether it be a technique or whatever go ahead and tag me in the uh, brutus monroe fan page so that i can see what you did because i love to see your guys's projects you guys are so creative there are so many amazing amazing projects that are out there and if That's you've been good. shy don't be shy i want to see your stuff I love those little raindrops too, and they would be cute, uh, colored even, you could color them the same color as the rain if you wanted, but I love that little shower of love. Did you want to say something else? Have you got the winners? Uh, no. Okay, which one first? We've got one in eight chance. Okay, the first, the first winner of the Leprechaun stamp is, drum roll, Spinning. he's got a spinner on there. It's a virtual, it's one online. It is Donna Ferrello. Donna Ferrello, you won this little guy. I will send this little guy to you. Okay, the next one. And the next one is the little flamingos. Yes. And can I just say something that I didn't notice till right now? How cute would this sentiment, I'll, be, I'll stand by you, be this, with this? It goes to Joan Hardy. Joan! You won this one. How cool. Okay, so we've got Joan and, and Donna. Go ahead and text me your addresses. And then uh, I will just say one more time that this, the 12 months of stamps and stencils are, I, there are a couple of them still in stock if you want to get them. You'll have a stamp set from, for every month. You can open, open up the little packages like I did. Um, they come in these little bags for every month and they don't just have the stamp they also have the cute little stencil so that is definitely something to keep in mind for yourself or for a gift and don't forget staycation and i think i covered everything let me just flip the phone so i can so i can give you a proper goodbye thank you so much for joining me through all the crazy sorry about the technical difficulties it almost wouldn't be alive with me if there wasn't some sort of technical difficulty right but I hope you will join me again next week. And I do appreciate you so much. 
go and do something creative and try something you haven't tried before and then go ahead and tag me. Thank you so much. I will see you next week. Bye.